So today, we're going to take a look at my new Dapol Silver Bullets. We're going to weather them, and then stay tuned to the very end. So I've got a question for you. That's something a little bit different. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, as you can see in front of you, I've managed to get a hold of a load of Silver Bullets wagons. There's 11 there and there's one more on order. Um, so that hopefully should be arriving at some point next week. Um, but there's been a slight, slight delay, so I'm sure the guy will get it to me as soon as he can. All right, so, but you'll notice that when they come around again, there are some that are um, pristine, um, some which are dapol weathered, and there are some which are sort of, um, how should we phrase it, user weathered if you like. Now, what I do want is all of them to look more like that. So what I am going to do is rust them all up um, quite heavily. I might leave the odd one or two slightly more like that. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't really want that silvery look. Um, certainly not pristine because they wouldn't have stayed like that for very long at all. So um, join me now and we'll go down to the workbench and I'll show you how I'm going to weather them up. Right now what we're going to do is I'm going I'm going to try and brush paint some and I might decide to airbrush some others I really don't know at the moment we'll see how it goes if the brush painting goes really well then I'll just continue with it if if I feel that actually it's not going very well I might strip it and then do it again. Now what I have managed to get and I'll bring this a bit closer, are some of these NACO um, symbols um, or signs and also some of these ECC um, symbols from Railtech. So there I can completely obliterate on some. I'm not going to do it on all because the, the NACO would be quite sort of damaged, if you like. Um, but there are some of the wagons, and this is just a typical example. I don't know whether you can make that out, but it says Erwin, um, um, Ermuina, or um, Ermuina. <laughs> I can't say it, but anyway, that's what it says there. <laughs> and there are two or three with that on. Um, so you might say to me, John, why did you buy this one and not more of these with NACO written on the side? Uh, because weirdly, these ones are about three pounds cheaper than these ones. Why? I don't know, but they were. I managed to buy some of these as a, from Hatton's and they were quite cheap from Hatton's. But uh, I ended up, I don't know whether I had the last or what. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but um I ended up getting a couple of these uh, meaner ones. And uh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to obliterate that and then use the transfers from Railtech to put on the side. But you'll notice there's two weathered by Dapol. And frankly, they are very, very similar. They are just production weathering. And it's OK. It's not that great, but it's OK. It's passable. And I'm not going to not run them on the way out because there probably would end up some like that. But you've just got these lines that come down the sides. And looking at the pictures of the actual tankers, it isn't quite like that. But for mass producing, I can see where they're coming from with this. They can't, they haven't got time to sort of look at individual wagons. I can appreciate that. I've got that. some of this Mr. Hobby, uh, those two colours. Um, they're not quite the same and some R1418 and then the anthracite and a which is that color as I use more for um, like frame dirt really um, I've got some white both different types that one isn't quite there isn't quite so much pigment in that one so it does tend to run on a bit thinner but I've also got some gray as well um, I have got pictures of the wagons in front of me and I will be following what I see on those. Now some of them have no spillage but they've gone very heavily rusted just like that 
and some have spills literally pretty much all over the place. So I am going to vary it. Now, I'm not going to show you literally every breath of this, but we'll certainly um, get around to showing you some of it. Right, now it's gone on a bit thin. Um, maybe it's a bit of a batch, I don't know. But I'm going to darken it up with some of the other colour as well. Just um, whack that on. That's going on a lot better. But I'm doing it in a crisscross type fashion because remembering that water would literally just run off. And in fact, I'm just going to dab over the top of that as well. So just making it a little bit more. Well, rusted, really. These were very, as far as I can tell, incredibly heavily used and abused and weren't necessarily kept in the best conditions and I mean it is a crying shame because they would have when they first come out they would have been a very beautiful uh, wagon tanker now over the ends and I am going to put a little bit of that ready version in as well there would have been some streaking down from the from the rain down the ends like that, a little bit over the top, a bit of the red, just a little tiny little bit. But I don't want to leave it obvious like that. So I'm just going to blend that in a little bit. I'm going to use this grey. Uh, start off with just sort of dabbing it down and it would literally just fall everywhere. So I'm really not going to be ever so careful with it. And putting white on as well would make it. All right, so I am just going to put a little bit sort of coming out there and a bit like that. All right. I think that's that's coming on quite nicely actually i just put a little bit that side just in there just because it looks i don't know what it is but it just looks unbalanced if it's not quite i don't mean symmetrical but hopefully you're getting what i'm trying to say but some of the wagons do have like i'll put it a bit coming down here on this one and bearing in mind it would fall vertically, so that's whatever happens there has got to uh, go to the bottom. Something like that. And some of the wagons do have that on there. Now I need to do that with some white. So just the tiniest little bit on the brush, in fact that's far too much. And then all I'm going to do is literally just, just put a little few streaks. Just like that, not much. Uh, a little bit over that bit there. Uh, that one's all right like that. And then just the tiniest little bit at this end. Just flick either side. And just dab a bit of white back on the top. Like so. Okay. Actually, those two colours don't look quite right together, do they? So I'm just going to wash that and I will put a little bit of the... the um, the colour from the tanker in into the frame as well so it does tie up a little bit touching over the top but the rust I get the impression by looking at the photos and again I'm sorry I can't show you but I get the impression that the, the logos were put onto the wagons even though they were rusty uh, because looking at one particular one here now the, the logo is actually quite clear 
uh, like that. Um, so, but anyway, that's what I'm kind of aiming at. And uh, I mean, the browns are ever so slightly different. And obviously this is still wet at the moment. It's not, it's not um, matted up yet, but uh, it will. So I'm going to do some of the others. And uh, I am going to just vary the, the positions of the um, spillage. In fact, some of them I'm not going to have any spillage at all. Um, it'll literally just be a rusted tanker. And uh, there might even be the odd one or two where I just get rid of all the markings completely. And I want two examples of that. So anyway, I'll carry on and um, I'll speak to you in a bit. Right, so we've got um, one of the Dapol weathered ones here. Now, whilst it's not bad, um, bad in the sense of it's it's OK, um, I do want to put a bit more streaking on it. So I'm going to go over with the dark, the, the same brown as I've already used just to match them up, really. Nothing more than that. And just sort of put a little bit of an element of streaking in it. I'm not going to go mad. So I'm just going to use some slightly darker tones and lighter tones in it. It's literally just a case of just putting it on and just creating the streaks as the rain would have fallen down. We'll have a look at it, look at it again in a minute. And uh, I'll show you the other two. And uh, that one's still not quite dry. Um, I'm hoping it mats up by quite a lot, otherwise I'll have to give it a, a matte varnish. But um, I mean, I think that will be all right once it's matted up, because it's all very shiny at the moment. All right, there we are so far. So there's still quite a few more to do, as you can appreciate. There's only six there, um, so I'm, I'm barely halfway through. But that was the original Dapol one. Um, so I've literally just marled, um, just gone over the, the slurry and just toned it down a bit. And, and so you've got somewhere the slurry has gone a little bit more wild. And then you've got this one where it's gone completely wild. And just slummed down all over the sides. So obviously they do need to dry because they're obviously quite wet. Um, this the first one that I did, I think was this one, wasn't it? You can see it is drying, but it's taking a while. But it's getting there bit by bit. Right, what I'll do next is I'll get one of the silver uh, pristine models and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So right, welcome back. Now I've got these two um, silver bullets here, which are obviously clean and pristine, and that's not uh, going to be appropriate if we're trying to make them look more like that. There is more to do with these, by the way. I'll show you that in a bit. But what I'm going to do um, is I do want to paint these, but if, you, if you've got one of these, you'll know that this is a um, chrome-type paint on here which is incredibly uh, waxy and silky and if I try and put anything on top of that or any normal paint it will just chip off so what I'm going to do is put some clear varnish on it and hopefully that will solve it I could rub it down with some glass paper or some wet and dry uh, with a lot of water but to be honest with you I'd rather not um, rub off all the detail and I feel I would so we'll try with the varnish first and see how we get on I think it will work because this dries as more of a skin over the whole thing and does seem to um, create some kind of surface so even just looking at that it's it's going quite milky looking over the top I will go around the NACA symbol NACO symbol I think one of the things that is quite important is to try and avoid the brush strokes. So getting the strokes going in different directions um, is always the way to smooth something like that, smooth out paint. Okay, so these two are just drying as you can see. But what I have noticed is that there are stripes going around the top on these parts here where these lines are coming round. 
So I've just picked up the finest of brushes and I'm literally just going to dab on. Again, I'm not gonna go very heavy. It's literally just a touch. But you can get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm just painting over all of the ridges. All right, so it's a little bit more like that. So I will go around and get all those done and uh, I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay then, so there's the Dapol wagon that's um, had the varnish put over the top. Now I am going to obliterate the uh, Miwa, <laughs> but I'm going to try and keep the safety warnings as well at the same time. So, so it's going on quite well. I want to try and make it as smooth as possible. Um, as I did before is drying incredibly quickly so I'm just going in both directions to help stop that all right so I'll get this painted up and I'll show you what I'll do with it in a minute right welcome back now I've painted up those um, wagons that were pristine so that's them now with the varnish over the top um, I will put a varnish over the top of these ones um, they are incredibly fragile and the paint is starting to chip off a little bit so I'm gonna let that dry because Acrylics by mere nature are plastic paint um, So it will need a bit of protection, uh, but I'm sure without too much handling. It'll be absolutely fine Now one of the other things I want to do is I noticed on one wagon these bits here um, Were blue um, So I'm going to imitate that uh, just by putting on a little bit um, And then wash it in that's how they were in this picture. Uh, so I'll do that one to that particular one. So it's again just a little bit of the blue on the top. Nothing exceptionally special. Get rid of it under there though. Do need to put the stripes on that one. Um, so I think the next time you see it, it will be on the layout. Okay. So there we are. That's all the tankers, apart from the one that's due to come, weathered and completed. Now, I say completed, but bearing in mind that the NACO transfers and the ECC haven't arrived yet, so I will need to put those on. Um, I, ha I didn't realize that Train Tech did them and I discovered them yesterday. So they've only just gone on order, so they'll be here hopefully around about Wednesday or Thursday, but uh, I can soon get those put on. But now I've got another question for you. Right, because along with the silver bullets, there was something else I bought. Now I've only got three at the moment, but they're on their way into shot now as we speak. It is not the 66, and you probably have seen that before, but it's what's pulling, this, what the 66 is pulling. So there we go. So I'll stop it just before the point. Actually, I could switch the point, couldn't I? And then it could just go out. So that, there they are. And shot and stop. Now, I've managed to acquire those three um, Graham Farish 100 ton tank wagons or tankers. And I've actually got another four um, second hands coming from Rouse of Sheffield. Um, so that means I have a rake of seven. Now, my question to you is, I don't think that livery runs anymore. Am I right? So should I respray them into different colours, black, red, dark blue, and put TGV on the side? What do you think? Because I've seen some of those, and some of those run clean, as in pr almost pristine clean. I've seen some with a lot of grime along the bottom and a lot at the top and almost as if somebody's got a cloth and just wiped the sides down so you can see the TGV. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below because I really would like to get these a little bit more contemporary because I've got a feeling that these are more 1980s, 1990s type liveries. So, you know, be really interested to know if there's any tanker experts out there. All right, anyway, we'll leave the video just there. So the top video is going to be all about what I did to build the structure of that area just there with all the 
papers and the papier-mâché work that went on with that. And the second video that you'll see appearing on your screen is going to be the second one in the series of how I built the carriage shed all along the back there. All right, thanks ever so much, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.